My name is Olusegun Mokuolu. Uh, I know that the title of this video may be surprising to some, or some it may make some to be curious. And if that is the case, it has achieved the objective. Now, if you are watching this on our YouTube channel, the title may have changed, it may still remain the same, but whatever the title is, uh, the essence of giving it a title like this, one is to create curiosity uh, such that people will want to know what exactly is this. Secondly, is to inform and give an idea of what we want to say. And thirdly, but very important, is because of people who don't watch videos but comment on video titles or when you post a video link and it brings out the title they will start commenting some will even start arguing based on the title but they've never watched the video they've never read the news it's like news link when you see the link to a new story the title will show up people can read the title but until you click on the link you can't read the story so but some people don't have the patience and the diligence to read the story to watch the news and then they will start arguing you know so when you see people like that you already know that that person did not watch uh the video nor read the link so don't let the title uh put you off is deliberate now uh i will be speaking and sharing around the issue of marital violence, divorce, and so on. I want to start first by saying that uh, we live in a very, very wicked world where people will take advantage of whatever is popular to begin to use it for their own advantage. You see, when a news breaks out, people jump on the news in order to trend. They jump on the news in order to make money. They want traffic on their social media platforms, on their blogs, on their media platforms. So they jump on something that is trending, not because they care about the issue, not because they care about the person but because they see it as an opportunity for them to gain some form of advantage you know in some cases like bring back our girls for example in nigeria it trended so much that even the wife of the american president also held a placard that says bring back our girls you know all the celebrities all over the world they were doing it they didn't care not i don't think any one of them sent a dime to nigeria even the wife of the american president did not use her position to influence america to help to rescue those women so people just love the fact that it is trading let them jump on it and some people think that um, it will give them credibility so for example currently the issue of domestic violence is trending in nigeria uh, there are, we have had stories of women who are dying because of violent husband. It's so sad. But people are taking advantage of it. People that ordinarily should not have a mouth to speak. They are coming out to speak because they think it will now give them credibility. Because the public opinion is that the, the generality of the public now are showing sympathy towards women that are in that kind of a situation. So people want to key into that. They now see that this is where the, the public, this is the direction in which the public is going. And so they just want to join that. And you will notice, just give it some time, once the issue died down, they don't care again because they really never cared. What they care about is just taking the advantage of the moment. If a lady is raped, for example, and is in the public domain, before you know it, you see everybody coming out to criticize rape. Even people that, by their actions, they may have even encouraged rape, but they will come out to criticize it. Why? They just want to catch in on the 
fact that it is trending or public opinion they want to align with public opinion in order to give themselves some form of credibility so be very careful so don't think that because everybody is posting so because when you when you look at the social media at the moment you know some people may watch this video a year two three four years later but when this video is being shot what is trending is the issue of wife abusers and so on so many people are jumping on it these are people that they have never really cared about marriage they've never cared about women they've never cared about what anybody is going through in marriage some of us by the grace of god we have been preaching we have been speaking we have been encouraging men to love their wives and so on we've brought biblical insight on how to run marriage there are preachers who have been doing this for years they are not just joining in they are not just jumping in on what is trending it has been what they have been preaching over the years so don't get carried away don't think everybody that is posting now you know it's almost like once you align with the public opinion now once you criticize pastors once you condemn the word of god once you support women that's the line of the public opinion that's the way people are going now so let me begin to address some of the issues around this matter one is that there is this tendency to blame the church and um, this is actually coming from the kingdom of darkness some of you may not understand this but we do understand it very clearly you know the devil is the, the devil has raised people that they are not part of us they are not they are not born again they are not members of the body of christ but they attend our church services some of them because of the kind of life they live and the messages we preach which condemn some of what they do they actually do not like the church system they actually don't like the body of christ so they are quick to look for any opportunity to criticize the church do you know there are people that though they claim to be going to church the conversation that always interests them is anything that just pulls the church down. Once somebody say, I can't understand why all these church are just misleading people, they are quick to jump on it. They are not preaching themselves. Or they are not leading anybody to the truth themselves. But they just love the fact that they want to criticize anything that is godly, anything that is of God. Because they actually, in their heart, do not belong to that God. They do not belong to that kingdom. Then some are even blaming the word of God. The Bible says God hates divorce. Now, the word of God, it gives life. It doesn't bring death. There is nobody that by, by, because they obey the word of God, they die. It, they actually have life. Even when they die physically, they actually have life. Peter was killed. Uh, uh, James was killed for the word of God. Stephen was killed for the word of God. That was physically. But generally speaking, when you come in contact with the word of God, you have actually come in contact with life. You begin to experience life. So the word of God doesn't kill anybody. So because a man is violent and kills his wife, you now blame the word of God. Because some people don't like the verse in the scripture that God hates divorce. They don't like the teachings of the scripture that in the beginning, he made them one. You see, when they asked Jesus about divorce, I know many people don't know this, and they don't even care to know. They don't care to know. When they asked Jesus about divorce, Jesus said, Have you not read that in the beginning, he that made them, made them one? You see, what Jesus was saying is that see, the issue of divorce does not even arise, because we are talking of two people that are already one. Now, I want to ask you a question. What exactly make a woman and a woman one? He said, God made them one. Now, you see, you can't put asunder what God has joined together. So if you go to a court to go and sign divorce paper, it doesn't undo what God has done. If you move out of the house, it doesn't undo what God has joined, which is what we advocate that if a man is violent, and if it's the other way around, leave the house. Somebody wants to kill you. Why will you not leave the house? Leaving the house is not the same thing as leaving the marriage. They are two different things. But you know, people love to mix this thing up. So when, when you say, when you say, for example, when you say to people, for example, that God hates divorce, you must not divorce. They are like, oh, so you want the woman to die? Yeah. 
dying what what is you see marriage and the house we are dealing with two separate issues marriage is a covenant that means that marriage is a spiritual union that god has brought about so the house is where a husband and a wife lives now so if he wants to kill you and you run out of the house you have not broken marital covenant if you are in the same car with a man and that man points a gun at you and wants to shoot you and you have a way to escape why would you not escape but you see if that man is your father that cannot change the fact that he remains your father till you die he is your father he gave back to you nothing can ever cancel it okay so you so this these are some of the issues and people don't understand that you see god is not forcing his word on the unbeliever on the contrary god has one message for unbeliever that they should come to the knowledge of christ that they should come and know jesus christ god is not demanding from an unsaved man to love his wife as christ loved the church he is not demanding from an unsaved woman to submit to her own husband in all things as unto the lord she can't do it it will never make sense to her because somebody who has not submitted her life to God, how will she now submit her life to a man? It, it will not work. So you, today you see, we, we see people that they are not living their life by the word of God. But when they have marital problem, they now want that marital problem to be judged by the word of God. Now when people now bring the word of God into it, they don't like it. And true, you won't like it because it's a strange thing to the kind of life you are living. So just leave it. Nobody is forcing you. Nobody has insisted on you. It's not Sharia. Nobody is forcing it on you. God doesn't force his word on anybody. If you like, you can marry and divorce one million times. That's your own problem, to be honest. You can marry a million times. In the end, you will be responsible for your actions. But for God's children, this is the way he has chosen for us. We have come to an understanding. We have come to see a revelation that there is nothing like divorce god hates divorce but that in any way we are that does not in any way say that somebody wants to beat you or somebody has taken a big stick to hit you you should not run why will you not run did you know that even jesus christ was taken to egypt because herod wanted to kill him moses was hid because pharaoh wanted to kill him Paul was dropped from a basket down because they wanted to kill him. So what are we saying? Do you need anybody to preach to you? But you see, because we have people now that they don't know this Jesus. They don't know this God. They don't have this Holy Spirit in them. So they hate the things of God. So they are very quick. You are seeing many of them coming to the pulpit now. What? They, they, they are just waiting for the final straw, which is to clearly declare that divorce is okay there's a way they are beginning to say it and, and i'm talking of on the pulpit you see when people of the world says that we don't have problem with it you know people don't know that there is a difference they there, there are people of the kingdom and there are people of the world there is a difference we live by different rules just like in human society or when you look at religion yeah the buddha the the islam you know, all of them, they have rules that they live by. And if you are not part of them, you can't understand their rules. And go and, go and live by your own rules. So, you know, it doesn't cause any stress. But we, it says, it, there is a satanic agenda. There is a satanic feminist agenda. Now, get look at the way I'm using my words. There is a satanic feminist agenda. Satan is doing everything to destroy marriage. So he, he has started with joining male and male in what they call church. Now, because it's not possible, it's not a church. Whenever you see a male and a male being joined, that's not a church. Whenever you see somebody say he's a gay bishop, that's not a bishop, that's not a child of God. So we all know that they are just wasting their time using the nomenclature. It doesn't change anything. They are not God's children, period. But you see, the devil is already doing that. He has moved further to say that people can choose their sex. You can decide that, no, I'm not a man, I'm a woman. So I want to be a woman. You can decide I'm not a woman, I want to be a man. 
because they have good health care. Is it in Africa here that you don't even have health care to take care of malaria, that you now tell somebody that to change your sex for male or female? You know you will die. Because when you even need surgery for medical need, you don't get it. So they are comfortable enough, so they can begin to try all of those nonsense. But the issue is that there is a satanic kingdom behind all these things. They are now teaching children in their books that it is okay to be a gay. That it is okay to choose whether they want to be a female <clears throat> or, or male. And we are all seeing this. So they, are, they also want to state it clearly that divorce is accepted. And I want to tell you that when the Antichrist would eventually reign over the whole world, all those stands of righteousness in the scripture, he will change it. The Bible said that he is going to change the law. And so he's going to change it and it will become acceptable to divorce. You see, that's where they are going. Many people can't see these things. Now, are we condoning domestic violence? No, I'm going to say some things about that. Now, look at the, a scenario where two unbelievers married and then one killed the other. Then the next thing is that you want to blame the church. You want to blame the word of God. Do they tell you they were living by the word of God? Or two church goers? Church goers who have not submitted their life to Jesus. You know, many people call Jesus their savior, but they don't know him as their Lord. Yeah, Jesus said, it is not those who call me Lord, Lord, but those who do what I say. Are you living your life by the scriptures? So there are church goers. When they, they just go to church, then they come home and do whatever they like with each other. And now they want to kill each other. Or one kills the other. The next thing you do is that you blame the church. And I'm asking myself that... Oh, so you say, the pastor says uh, uh, they should not divorce. And you have interpreted that to mean that the woman cannot run from the home where they want to kill her. Now, that is what they've been doing to take your money. It means that you also don't think for yourself. It means you are believing anything. The Bible said that you should not believe all things, but test everything. Why can't you test everything? Why is it that you are living your life by the man of God and not by the word of God? Because you don't know God. So the next thing you do, you start blaming God. You start blaming the word of God. God doesn't kill people. God gives life. He gives life to us. Jesus said he gives us abundant life. So if, you're, if your pastor should tell you now that you should go and jump in front of a train, you will go and jump. Why are you deceiving yourself? You are a liar. If your pastor says that trailer that is coming, go, just go and stay on the road. Let the trailer crush you. Will you go and stay there? You are telling lies. The truth is that you are, you are doing what you want to do. Many women do not want to leave terrible marriage. But they find it convenient to blame the pastor. They find it very convenient to blame the church. To blame the word of God. But of course the word of God cannot be blemished. It has been tried and tested seven times. It is from everlasting to everlasting. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but the word of God is not going to pass away. Everything in that word is going to be fulfilled. You are not the person that is going to trivialize the word of God. This art was formed by the word of God. You yourself, you were created by the word of God. So if your pastor says to you that you should take your children and begin to slaughter them, will you do it? How come the only thing you obey is that you should stay in a, in a violent house? How come that's the only thing you can obey? How come? Why don't you know God for yourself? The Bible says judge for yourself. Have you not read that? It says judge for yourself. Are you not supposed to know God personally? Why are you being deceived? Every man is responsible for his action or inaction. Adam and Eve were deceived. Did this spare them of the consequence? Even the scripture recognized that the woman was beguiled. The woman said, the, the serpent beguiled me. Later in Timothy, we read that the woman was deceived. But did that spare her of the consequence? You are responsible for your Christian life. If a pastor tells you to go and empty your account and you empty it, you will suffer alone. You are responsible for your Christian life. You are responsible for knowing the truth. Many of you are not interested. You want to live by the faith of the man of God. 
you are following men, you are not following Jesus. He said, if any man will come after, after me, let him deny himself, pick up his cross, and follow me. The person we are to follow is Jesus. My pastor cannot tell me and say that uh, uh, if my wife carries a stick and she wants to hit me, I should stay there. My pastor can't tell me that. I know what to do. I know where to run to. My pastor can't tell my wife that if I take a cutlass and I want to cut her head, she should remain there. My pastor can't tell her. My wife will run away. Why, why are you people hypocrites? Why are you hypocrites? So if your pastor tells you that you should lie down on the road and allow trailer to crush you, you will go and obey it. Why are you hypocrite? The truth is that many women cannot come out of violent marriage. Many women cannot come out because they've made marriage a god in their heart. And that's the way the pastors have sold marriage to them also. That's the way they have taught them. And they themselves, they are not ready to learn anything. See, I'm, I'm going to show you a lot of things in this video. They are not ready to learn anything. Let me tell you something. There's a lady... There's this lady, she, she was paying the school fees of a guy, sponsoring the guy through, through school. And uh, at the end, this guy, she now discovered this guy want to marry another person. She now told me. And our counselor, I said, see, don't struggle to marry this man. A man that has chosen to go with another lady is better to allow him to go. Don't disturb yourself. If you're a child of God, wait for God to give you your own husband. And I said, but you see, I want you to learn about biblical marriage. So I now sent her my YouTube link. I sent her videos that I've made because I cannot continue to preach to one, 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 one person all the time. The videos are there. Even for me, I go and check videos of men of God that blesses me. I, nobody sent me any link. I'm the one that look for it. These ones, I am even the one that is sending them links. Do you know what this lady said? She says, I don't have data. A lady that is sponsoring a man through school does not have data, data to watch 15 minutes video that could transform her life. What does, what does that tell you? She's not ready. There's another lady. There's another lady now. She was asking me about this domestic violence and everything. And I sent her the video I've made. This lady, she met a man, and within six months, they got married. Within six months. She didn't know anything about this man. She was the one that paid for the wedding, moved the man into her own house. Few, few months, or less than weeks into the marriage, the man started showing himself. As I'm speaking, the man is out of the house. She came to me, I explained to her, I said, see, the man has gone, let him go. You just continue to live your life for Jesus. You have made mistakes already. I now sent her videos to watch. Guess what? She told me, she said, sir, I don't have data. That is a lady that can marry a man into her own house. That can pay wedding expenses. She said she doesn't have data. They are not ready to learn anything. They are not ready to learn anything. I've seen countless like that. Countless. There is a lady. She came to me. I'm going to share a story with you today. Is it today by the grace of God I have time? She came to me. She told me that she's in a relationship with a guy that is fornicating, that has so many girlfriends. I told this lady, I said, this man is definitely not born again. He's not a child of God. Anybody that is fornicating, they are not God's children. That's not our standard. After all the money, Guess what? A year later, this same lady called me and told me, I said, sir, what can I do? This man is still doing it. I said, so you are still with this man? One year later, she's still involved with the man. I knew that she was going to get married to the man. I just knew she was going to get married to the man. Many of them, it is until they get married to that man. I've spoken to many, I've spoken to many women. A woman came to me one day. This woman... She bought, she left her job in Abuja to go and stay with her husband in Akwaibon. She had a good job. She resigned. When she got, when they got married, the husband said she should not work. This lady was at home. And the man was oppressing her. The, the lady bought a car. The man was the one using it. The lady would have to look for a car there to take their own children to school. And the man would drive past. So one day I told her, I said, my sister. You said you were born again before you got married. 
Did God not in any way show you sign that this man is not right for you? I said, sit down and think. She said, sir, God show me sign. I said, what is the sign? She said they went to their wedding. They had an argument and the man gave her a dirty slap. She said she knew at that point that she should not go ahead with the wedding. But she went ahead. She went ahead. I can count for you stories, stories. That, that is one you can watch on my YouTube channel. I married a man that beat me to death. This lady, this story is currently ongoing. She shared it with her own mouth. It's not me telling her story. She recorded it and sent it to me. I know her. This man was beating her regularly, beating her regularly. She was hiding it from her parents. When they see bruises on her, she will lie that she had an accident, that something happened. Two weeks to her wedding, two weeks to her wedding, guess what? The man beat her, she was rushed to the hospital. When her parents saw it, she lied that it was an accident and went ahead and married this man. As I'm speaking to you, as I'm speaking to you right now, this lady cannot get out of her house to go and make her hair. I'm telling you true life story. We just spoke about two weeks ago. She can't get out of her house to go and make her hair. She's suffering terribly. And I, when she spoke to me, I told her, I said, what do you expect? This is a man that has been beating you. And guess what? The father of the husband support it. Can you believe that? The father of the husband supported. it. She hid it. It was the woman that hid it from her own parent that the man she wants to marry was beating her. She was the one covering her up. Oh, you have not seen women. A woman will be the one that will hide the evil and inadequacies in a man. Have you not read of uh, Ananias and Sapphira? That the woman agreed to lie on behalf of her husband. Do you know that's why she died? That's why uh, 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 Sapphira died. If she told the truth, she would not have died. She was trying to cover up an evil man. I've seen many women like that. You see, my point is this. My point is this. The Bible says that it is not good for a man to be alone. But what kind of man? That was a man that was created in the image of God. That was a man that carried the life of God. That was a man that knew no sin. But you, you are marrying a man that drinks NSC. You want to marry a man you met in the club. You want to marry a man that Jesus is not the Lord of his life. When he's beating you, you will say, oh, look at the church. Look at all these people. What are they preaching? Why, why don't we address issue from all the different aspects of, this, of the issue? God has made enough provision for, a, for anybody to, ab to avoid abusive spouse. Do you know what the Bible says? He says, do not be a friend of an angry man. What else do you want God to say? You want to marry a man. I've seen women, they will come to me. They say, sir, I really love him, but he has anger issue. And I'm like, he has anger issue. The Bible said, do not be a friend with an angry man. Why then are you going to go ahead to marry a man that has problem with anger? Me, even me, when I want to marry, I read scripture clearly. It says it is better to dwell in the bush than to be in a big house with a nagging woman. I also don't want to marry a woman that has problem with anger. I've seen women. My sister works in an hospital. We have seen women that slaughtered their husband while, they, while, she, while he was sleeping. While he was sleeping. So what are we saying? So you see, <laughs> the ways of the kingdom, and the, the ways of the kingdom, they are completely different. If you follow God, you will get it right. And I say to women, let's assume you marry when you were not born again, when you didn't know the truth. Now you say you come to know Jesus. The first thing you do is that acknowledge before the Lord you have made a mistake. And then now let's live by the word of God. You that God is not the one governing your life. The words of Jesus is not what is governing your life. When he now comes to marriage, you will now be saying you disagree with this, you disagree. You will disagree and carry your disagreement away. Nobody is begging you to disagree. You will disagree because you have actually not submitted your life to God. You see, a man that knows Jesus, he doesn't need anybody to preach to him to love his wife. A woman that has submitted her life to Christ does not need anybody to preach to her to submit. 
Nobody preached to me to love my wife. It was in my course of working with God, I see that this is the way Jesus wants me to treat my wife. If she does something, there are times I just overlook it because I ask myself, what would Jesus do? A man that doesn't know Christ, he can't do that. He will slap you. He will abuse you. He will tell you that you are a nobody. He will tell you that you are stupid. I have never, I have never abused my wife. I say you are stupid. Why would that, pro the Bible says, do not let ungodly word proceed out of your mouth. Or you go and marry a man that even before you got wedded, before you got wedded, there has been those kind of verbal words. Let me, let me show you some signs that some women love abusive, abusive spouse. I'm going to show you. You see, when I say this, it doesn't mean a woman will say, give me an abusive husband. No, that's not what I'm saying. But by her action and inaction, she clearly loves an abusive spouse. I'm going to give you some signs. Let me read some of them to you. Number one, you are engaging in sex with a man that is not married to you. Oh, you don't understand. The Bible says you should flee fornication. That means a man that knows the Lord, that fears the Lord, he will obey the Lord. That man does not obey the word of God. He is fornicating with you. He is not married to you. You not think that man will fear God and not slap you? You think that man will not fear God and beat you? Now, by this, have I said people who didn't have sex before marriage, they are having a perfect marriage? No, it's a different thing. But at least let's start with this. You know that fornication is not good. It's sinful. Sin is a sin. You are fornicating. You won't tell anybody oh, what you will be telling us now. He's a wicked man. She's a stupid woman. But you didn't tell us that you were fornicating before you got married. Is that what God told you? You that you don't, you cannot obey, flee fornication. Is it you that you will now obey? God hates divorce. If they are lying to you, let them continue to lie to you. One day we will stand before God and everybody will give account of their lives. So you see, all the things we are saying, uh, God is just helping us to say it. Oh, you are free to live your life the way you like. You can divorce and remarry a million times. There's no problem. For some of us, we will keep to the word of God. It's not, you see, we can disagree without hating each other. If you hate people because they disagree with you, you are not of God. There are people I disagree with very strongly, even on social media. But I don't hate you. I sincerely, I don't hate any, God is my witness. I don't have hatred towards anybody in my heart. I will just disagree with you. But some of you, because you disagree with us, because you don't like what we preach on divorce, you hate us. The Bible says if you hate, you are a murderer in your heart. It says if you hate, you are a murderer. Let me continue with the sign. Another sign is that you are enduring abusive relationship. You are in a relationship. The man will not call you for three months. He will be waiting for you to call. You will be the one calling him. Say, ah, ah, you don't call me. The man will tell you he doesn't have time. And you continue to remain inside that relationship. That man has already seen you that you are a slave. He has seen that that relationship is your life. You, so you think he won't abuse you. People do so many, so many stupid things. I was speaking to a lady who said she attended a redeemed church, that she's born again. She's in a kitty, a kitty state. Please, uh, in fact, thank God I remember this story. She's in a kitty state, serving, doing her NYSC. A friend introduced her to a man online. They started chatting. The man is in Kaduna, a soldier. This lady left a kitty to go and meet a man in Kaduna. And when they want to sleep at night, the man said, oh yeah, let's have sex. She told me this herself, this year. And the girl said, no, ah, she doesn't want to have sex until she's married. If because it was a barrack, the man could not beat her. If it were to be in another environment, that man could have raped her. The journey was to be for five, six days. The following day, the lady had to return to a kitty. Now, I now told this lady, I said, what is wrong with you? If a man wants to marry you, a man that has not met you, it is his duty first to come and visit you. It's not your duty to go and visit him. Many of you, you, are just, you just don't want to be honest. You have traveled kilometers to go and visit a man you have never seen before. For the first time. You can't allow a man to come and meet you and introduce himself to you. Do you know the funniest thing about this lady? She was not telling me that, sir, you know, can I tell that my friend 
can I tell that my friend that this is what happened? I'm afraid that if I tell her, she won't be happy with me. I said, no, you should be afraid that Jesus is not happy with you. Can you imagine? So, you see, many women, they don't know that they are enduring abusive relationship. Abusive relationship is not the day a man takes a, 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 a baseball baton, or what is it called, and hit you. That is, not, that is not abuse alone. You've been going through abuse. Many, many of our ladies, they are in abusive relationship. Many of them who are posting on their wall, they are in abusive relationship. But they are not going to... See, no matter what you say, they won't come out of it. Though. I've seen it firsthand. I told a lady one day, Jennifer, she's on my friend list. You see, I'm, I'm, I'm saying you can, be, you can be sure of what I'm doing. You may not find that exact name, but this lady is on my friend list. She, she told me that this guy is sleeping around with a lot of men. I said, see, my sister... You cannot marry a man like this. You can't tell me you are a child of God and go ahead and marry a man like this. It is very wrong. Do you know what she did? She blocked me. She stopped, she stopped our communication. What will I do? Exactly one year later, she called me. Exactly one year later, she called me. And when she called me, she was crying on the phone. I said, what happened? She was already pregnant. She got married to the man. Now she's pregnant. The man had driven her out of the house. And the man had already posted another woman on his status. She is on this, my Facebook friend. She can testify to what I'm saying to you. I'm not telling you stories that are far-fetched. I'm telling you true life stories. I want her. There's another lady. She's this on my friend list. She, she, she slept with a man. She got pregnant at the age of, uh, is it 17 or so? And then we met. I canceled her. And she started growing in the Lord. Now, she was working in a restaurant or so. The manager was befriending one of the girls there. And when she joined them, the manager started befriending her too. So she was aware that this manager is befriending the two of them. And she continued in it. Remember that she already has a, a, pa a painful past of already having a child when she was a teenager. This lady went ahead and married this manager. When she called me to tell me she was already pregnant again, the manager had driven her out and had brought another woman in. What are we saying? You all know the truth. What are we saying? Now, you see, when people hear this, some people will be saying, eh, so you are defending men. No. He's paining me that women with their own hands are entering into terrible marriage. Why, what do I want to defend a man for? For what? No, no more, no more man will beat his wife. I don't even know where they beat in a woman. Sincerely. You know, this weekend, I've been looking at women. I'm like, if I want to beat this one now, where will I be? <laughs> where, where, where will I be? A woman is soft. A woman is tender. This is the way a woman is created. It's not those of us like this that our body is wood. A woman is... Where, where do I hit? As in, what do I gain in beating a woman? In what? I'm to lead a woman by love. I want to beat my woman with love. I want her to be like, how can my husband love me like this? Despite everything I've done, how can he love me like this? That's the way to beat your wife. Beat your wife with love. Beat her very well with love. Beat her with patience. Beat her with humility. Beat her with care. Show Christ-like example. But you can't expect that from all these men that don't know Jesus. You are marrying a man that don't know Jesus. You want the man to treat you like Jesus. Let me give you another sign. Hiding the evil of the man. Many women, they were the one that will hide the evil things that some the man they are dating is doing. They will hide it so that people will not cancel them to come out of it. I just cited an example for you. A woman beaten to the point of being rushed to the hospital. 
She couldn't still tell that it was this man that beat me. Two months later, she married that man. She has never known joy since she met this man. You know, ah, some women have suffered. Marriage has messed some women's life. Marriage. That's why I plead with young people. You see, that's why God has told us that our book on marriage, treating the right spouse, we should make it free. And I'm announcing it. We are not going to sell it till I die by the grace of God. That book, except for the one that is on Amazon, we are printing it as I'm speaking to you. We are printing those books as we are getting fund. We are printing them and we are going to distribute them free of charge. Because if you see, I, I'm a counselor. I counsel women. I counsel men. I talk to single. I talk to married almost on a daily basis. If I tell you what some women are going to, there are men too. But if I tell you what some women are going to, there are times I cry. There are times I go to God. I'm like, God, why? This thing is so simple. It's so simple. I don't know. I said, what can a woman do to you that you'll be beating her? Just go and lie down somewhere and pick your Bible and read. <laughs> it's so simple. All right. So there are women that they are the one that we even hide those things that are wrong in their mind. They don't want people to know. Oh. You see, this year, this year, and I said this in my church. So those of you who are members of my church, you will, you, will, you will recall that I said this. A lady this year, she got married to a man. <laughs> Do you know why she got married to the man? The man threatened that if she does not marry her, he is going to kill himself. Hey, I've never heard that before in my life. The man threatened that if this lady does not marry her, he is going to kill himself. Now, this lady has another man she loves. Or she claims to love. So this lady, because she doesn't want this one to die. That's the way she told me the story herself. She went ahead and got married to a man. That she said she has nothing for. But just that the man should not die. Please, brethren. What do you expect? This year. This happened this year. You know what happened. Shortly after their wedding. Number one, I don't know how it happened. She said they didn't have sex. For a week and in the course of that week the man beat her she ran out of the house guess where she ran to she ran to the man she claims to love and spent some days there before she came back home when she came back home her husband who doesn't work where they reside had traveled she's now pregnant and the husband had not slept with her since they got wedded but she's now pregnant. She's, she's months into her pregnancy now. Because the old man has been away now for months after the wedding. She's now pregnant as I'm speaking with you. My dear brothers and sisters, what is, if we don't address this, we, 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 you see, we'll just be shedding crocodile tears. We need to speak to our sisters. You see, I, I, I'm, me, I talk to the brother. Some people have accused me that my post, they are always hitting men. They are always hitting men. But we need to talk to our sisters too. A man can be evil. Leave him alone. Don't marry him. It's not by force. And if you have made a mistake, there is remedy in Christ. There, no, no, there, there is no of us that didn't make mistake. In fact, I have made many mistakes in life. So, that's why Jesus died for us. He will show you mercy. But you must come and learn that mercy at his own. You must follow his own way. You cannot obtain his mercy at your, uh, in your own way. It has to be according to his own will. So you have to now sit down and learn what is biblical marriage. You can't know biblical marriage by default. You can't know it by going on social media. Some of you, you are so bitter. You'll be posting against men. Posting in support of divorce. So posting, what is that? I told, I had to tell a, a lady. I said, see, you know, she's divorced. And every day she'll be posting to just show that she's happy. And I told her that the fact that you are trying to prove or send a message to this man that you are now happy without him is a, also a sign that you are not happy. Why? Because that means that you are still living for the man. Why are you living for the man? Why not live for Jesus? Why can't you just spend your life to live for Jesus? Why can't you come and sit down and learn? 
I've shared my own story. I wanted to get married. And the whole thing broke up. We were we had fixed our wedding introduction. It was just two, three months away. And it broke up. And when I went to the Lord, I cried, I cried. What happened? Because I loved her. I gave her all of my heart. At least to the best of my ability at that time. Of course, I wasn't perfect. I probably made mistakes. I surely did make mistakes. But then when I cried to God, God then showed me that, see, I did not lead you to this woman. It was your feelings and emotion that led you to her. Now I want you to sit down and let me teach you what marriage is. I didn't marry again until nine years later. I, I didn't draw from the moon. I'm telling you my true life story. I'm not a perfect man of God that draw from the moon. I made mistakes here and there. That's my story. I had to wait for nine years. That was three months to my wedding, to my wedding introduction, and then only to marry nine years later. Because God said, Shagun, you don't know about marriage. Sit down, let me teach you. I sat down. Do you know why I'm teaching about marriage today? It's because of those nine years. God began to reveal the mystery of marriage to me. I was like, wow. There's no way I could have ever gotten it right without Jesus. It's just impossible. See, the Bible says that no one knows the heart of a man except God. Now, you want to marry a man. What you are marrying is the heart of that man. It means that only God can reveal to you and say, this is the right man, this is not a right man. But you are not going to listen. You are, too, you are in love. <laughs> you are in love. So you want everything done, guru, 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 guru. Then you now turn around and say, oh, Ed, they should stop preaching divorce. We will preach it. We will preach it. Let me give you another sign. When a woman begins to think that she needs marriage to live, the psychology of many women in our society is that they think that without marriage they can't live. They've idolized marriage in their heart. They've idolized marriage. And I will give you two examples. A bishop in Nigeria. You see, I, I want to be factual so that you don't, you can't confuse yourself. In 2000, this is 2022, 2021, 2020, December 2020, I guess, if I remember. A bishop that holds December program, he asked them at that program, he said, those who want to marry, they should come, they should dance to the altar. They should dance to the altar. Men and women in their thousands, they, they, they were dancing to the altar. Dancing, hey, please, is that how they get married? It's because they are desperate to be married. Why are you dancing? You see, you will dance to the altar. That's how to marry. And then in 2021, the same bishop, he asked them to hold faith card. I said that they should receive their marriage. I've seen many pastors, they will say, this is, I see wedding card, I see wedding card. Is that how to marry? The Bible says, I will teach and instruct you the way you should go. Many of you are not ready for teaching. You are not ready for instruction. You are with, it is this little thing you know since you've been born that you've been working your life with that has not worked for you. And rather than sit down and say, Lord Jesus, I just want to know you now. Help me. How can you be coding card and say you are receiving your husband? That is not the way the bishop himself receives his own wife. Oh. But because you are desperate to marry, many of you are doing all this, uh, what God does not do does not exist. Is that a prayer? Is, is it prayer you are praying there? You are sharing it. You are putting it in people's inboxes. I see many people that have never shared the gospel with me. They are sharing what God does not do does not exist. Is that prayer? Because they, 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 you know, they have brainwashed you. They have brainwashed you. That's why you will claim that it is a man of God that says you should not leave marriage. So that's why you are dead. That's what you are doing. You don't share the truth. Many people will not share this message. They will still go and share uh, what God does not do does not exist. The Bible says in that it is impossible for God to lie. It also says God cannot tempt any man. There are things God cannot do. And those prayers, they are not prayer for the church. They are not prayer to bring glory to Jesus. These are materialistic prayer. Somebody is just promising you, you will get married, you will have job, you will have visas, you will have a child. That's what they are praying. 
and you think that is how the church was raised, you have your Bible with you. Read the book of Acts. And then later you will turn around and say, oh, all this pastor. So why are you being brainwashed? Why are you being brainwashed? Somebody is telling you to come to the altar, to dance to the altar, you will get married, and you are dancing to the altar. I remember a lady, oh, 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 oh. In her desperation to be married, a pastor told her to buy a generator for their church. She bought it. She bought it. These same women, if you ask them to go and watch Billy Akonis message, Zach Pones message on YouTube, they will tell you they don't have data. They don't like the truth. They like deception. They, they love deception. You are, that's why many people are putting their money in ministries that are destroying them. In ministries that has not shown them the truth. I told you, I told you a story recently of a man who, who, who invited me to Anitri. And he told me that I should teach him about marriage. And I said, my brother, I can't teach you about marriage in one hour. Go back to your school. Go and tell your fellowship group. Let them organize marriage seminar. Let them invite me. I don't want money. Just invite me. I will, at my own expense, I will drive and come and teach you. They did. They invited me for four days program. Four days. And every day I was going, I would spend hours teaching them. I started from Genesis. They never knew that was what marriage was. They never understood marriage. On the fourth day when I was leaving, they were asking me questions till late night. I left that place that day at night. And I told them, look at how much question you are asking me after four days. Because sincerely, I told them, I said, we need seven days. We need, if we want to do it very well, we will need two weeks. But I can manage seven days. Just taking time to teach. Because many of your preachers, they are not taking time to grow you, to teach you the truth. All they want is to do service for you so that you can drop money. There is a difference between doing service and the gathering of the saints. When we gather, we are to gather because of the presence of Jesus for the edification of the body of Christ. But what we are doing today is service. And many of you will defend them. You will fight for them. That is where many of you are putting your resources. You know what I've discovered? Most ministry that are preaching the real gospel of Christ, they don't have money. To date, till today, till today. You know, so I've settled some things in my heart before I started. <laughs> I've settled this. So it's not, a, it's not a problem for me. Because I've realized that you need to lie for people to give. For some people to give. But if you wait on God and preach the right thing, it may take time. But God is not a debtor to any man. He will provide all that you need to do his work. Many of you, you are sowing seed. You, some of you, you can't buy Bible for somebody to read. You can't share tracts. You can't share the gospel. But because you want to get married, you will go and sow one huge money. To a man that you don't even know his life. Are you not desperate? That's a sign that you want to marry a violent man. Because what do you expect that you are going to get uh, out of that? So these are some of the signs that as a woman, you are actually heading in for an abusive man. And note, an abusive man is just, just a man that beats you. It's not the man that beats you. Even from the way a man approaches you, he can start abusing you from the way he, he approaches you. You are meeting a man on Facebook. He is telling you that you should come to his base. That is abuse. A responsible man, he will come and show himself to you. You know, these women, I don't know why you don't even understand some of these basic things. You are the woman. Let him come and meet you. Let him come and present his case. You see, another sign is that women don't like to ask men questions. And you know why? They don't want to provoke the man so that he will not go. Because she's already given testimony that she has found the man. So all the questions she's supposed to ask, she will not ask. That's why in our marriage course, we have a module that is dedicated to questions you should ask. Module 9. And I gave an example of 40 questions 
Because women don't like to question men. I tell them, a man that you want to marry that does not like to be questioned, that is already a sign to you that you should not marry that man. When you now marry him, you now say, he does things he doesn't tell me. Why will he tell you? When you Before you marry, did you ask him anything? You were afraid to ask him. He will have shown you his character, that he is a, he's a secretive man. He doesn't want to answer anything. So you, you don't even know you are in an abusive relationship. Many women are in an abusive relationship, as I'm speaking to you, and they are not even aware of it. He comes, you, 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 he, you will, you will be, some of you, you are doing nude videos on, on, on social media, on the YouTube, on, on, on WhatsApp. You don't know that's abusive. You don't know that that's abusive. Have you not seen most of this leaked video? Most of the videos that are leaked of a man and a woman having sex, most times it is the face of the woman that we see. We don't see the face of the man. So you as a woman, how come somebody carries camera, is recording you, and you are okay with it? Are you not are you not are you not already encouraging abuse? He's having sex with you, he's recording it. He doesn't show his own face. It's always your face that we see. How about many of you that are even engaged with married men? A woman that is engaged to a married man, you, you think that that woman doesn't doesn't want an abusive husband. Now somebody will say, hey, but what about the married man? Yes, the married man is committing adultery. And he will be born for it. The Bible says, can a man walk on a coal and not be born? He said, he that commit adultery is a fool. So he will face his own. But you, young girl, you are already in an abusive relationship. This year, a young lady told me. She said she's been involved with the choir master in their church. The man is married. But she, he has been sleeping with this lady like no man's business. As in, I'm sure they have sex more than the man who have sex with his wife. And then, after speaking with this lady, you know what she told me? She said, sir, this man is so caring. He's the dream of any man. This lady I'm talking about, <laughs> let me leave that. But I just want you to know that what I'm sharing with you is not story. True life story. I said, how can you say a man that is committing adultery? He is caring. I said, so if this man was married to you, will you be happy that he is doing that? with another lady outside. You see, may women endure abusive relationship every day. Why are we deceiving ourselves? They love it. She was enjoying this abusive relationship. Terminating pregnancy for this man. A man that you know will not marry. This man is just using you. He just needs some fresh blood. How do they call it? He just needs some new experience. And you are the one. By the time he's done with you, he told you he's not going to leave his wife for you. It's not. A lady rushed to me the other day and said, I should pray for her, I should pray for her, that uh, uh, somebody had cursed her. I said, who cursed you? She's been following my post for years, yet she's sleeping with a married man. And the wife of that man now pronounced curse on her. And she's running up and down. And people like that will be commenting, will be commenting and be shouting, all these divorce, all these pastors. Hypocrite. You think you can bring the name of God to disrepute? Who are you? He is holy. The Bible says there are four cherubims. And every day, they say holy is the Lord forever. If you don't praise him, the praise of God is 24-7. From eternity to eternity. The Bible says it's holy. Who are you to think that you can, dis you can bring the name of the Lord into disrepute? Who do you think you are? It is the mercy of God that you are alive. If God were to be a man, you will not be alive. But he's a merciful God. He accepts our mistakes. Any little thing, you want to blame the church. You want to blame the word of God. And many of you that call yourself Christians, that you are calling upon the name of the Lord, you are joining them. Because you are not sensitive to anything. The, word, the, the people of the world are now the ones teaching you what to do. You don't know what to do. They are the ones coming to correct you. The people of the world, they are the one telling you that why should they say it, they should not divorce? Did anybody ever told you don't run out of the house? 
If your pastor tell you to go to the road and allow trailer to crush you, will you do it? The fact is that you didn't come out of that house because you don't want to come out of that house. That is the truth. For whatever reason known to you, that is the truth. It's not the pastor. Is it the pastor that is suffering? If somebody wants to kill me now and I say my pastor says I should not go out. My pastor is in his house and I trust my pastor. He's probably resting. <laughs> my dear lovely pastor. He's probably resting because he works a lot. And then me, I'll be here. I'll say my pastor, my pastor. Then somebody will come and kill me. I will run. But if I run, it doesn't change the fact that this is my room. I will come back to it. So please, let's, let's get some of these basic, basic things right. The Bible has made it clear. Do not be a friend with an angry man. Do not be a friend with an angry man. Learn to know God for yourself. The days are over when you are going to be basing your Christianity on what somebody says. Some of you, you have been going from one prayer meeting to the other. Whereas Jesus said, look at, look at the foolishness of people. Jesus said, in John chapter 15 verse 7, If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye will ask anything ye will, and it will be done for you. So instead of you abiding in Christ, and his word abiding in you, you will go and join one program that says what God does not do doesn't exist or something. They are telling you, that, so they are leading you to pray. You think that is where God answers prayer. God answers prayer when you meet what he has said. It's not when you go to a place. If we have prayer meeting, it's not because that is where God will answer prayer. It is because we want to have collective prayer for the body of Christ, for the name of God. Anybody that is gathering you to one mountain, to one shiloh, to one prayer ground, to solve your social problem, is a false prophet. Abide in me, let my word abide in you. So you will see somebody that is sleeping with another, man's, uh, another woman's husband. She is there praying that what God cannot do does not exist. You will see women that are fornicating. They are there praying that what God cannot do does not exist. Because they are not going to tell them they are to repent. The, the Holy Spirit they have, the spirit they have, because it's not holy, the spirit they have, he is not going to tell you that you are a fornicator, you are an adulterer, you are a liar, you are a murderer. Many of you are wicked to the people you work with. There is no love in your life, and then you are rushing to prayer to go and pray. And you think you will not be deceived. That's how you will go and receive an abusive husband. Because that's what they, they will be prophesying husband for you. You know, brethren, you know the worst part is when some of your loved, beloved preachers, when they now join the narrative, and now they also begin to talk and talk about um, oh all these abusive men, all these abusive men. I want to tell you something, dear brothers and sisters. What the preachers, majority of preachers are preaching today, what kind of men do you think it will produce? Do you think it will produce godly men? When last did you go to a, an assembly and you tremble at your sin? You tremble because of your sin. When last? When last did you feel the presence of God at the gathering of believers? Or what you see is a rebellious spirit that is just making noise. You carry whistle there. You carry handkerchief. You just make a lot of noise. They tell you that you have come to your mountain. They tell you that this is your year of double this. This is. Do you think those kind of message can produce godly men? You want me to tell you messages that produces godly men? Paul said, knowing the terror of God will persuade men. That, that is it. Peter said, repent every one of you. Peter, he said, repent every one of you for the remission of your sin. Do you know what they said? The Bible said, they were caught to heart and they said, men and brethren, what shall we do? When did your pastor preach a message that makes men to say, what shall we do? In the book of Acts, chapter 6, when they were to appoint men, 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 let me read it. So that somebody do not say, 
I want you to see the standard of the men that the Bible is raising. What should be the standard? The standard in the uh, in the book of Acts when the early church started. Let us see the standard. Now, verse 3 of Acts chapter 6. Look at what it says. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report. They were not pastors. They were not preachers. They were just ordinary churchmen. But the Bible says they were men of honest report. Today, many of our pastors, they don't have honest report. So if there is anybody that raises correct men, it is the word of God. It says men of honest report, full of Holy Ghost, not full of lust. Many of you are involved with men that are full of lust. Some of you, the first day you meet a man, the first thing you do is to have sex with him. Those kind of men, you think they won't abuse you? The first thing you do is to have sex with him. He's fondling with your breast. You are lying down there and you say you are a Christian sister. He's turning your nipple there. You are saying, what are you doing? No, what is he doing? He's, he's helping you to plate your hair. If somebody is fondling with your breast, you say, what, are, what is he doing? And you say you are a Christian sister. What are you full of? He says, men full of Holy Ghost. If you want to marry, marry a man like this. And do you know that they were just to serve table? Look at the standard. It means many pastors in our generation, many of the people who are now calling themselves apostles, bishops, doctor, reverend, they will not qualify to serve food in the early church. They will be in new believers class. They will be in, in children's Sunday school learning as a child. But today they are general overseers. They are pastors. It says full of Holy Ghost and wisdom. Many of you, you marry men that lacks, that lacks nothing. It says that lacks wisdom. You marry men that lacks wisdom. It says men full of wisdom. It means that if a man has wisdom, it's obvious. Because how will they appoint a man that is full of wisdom if they don't know a man that has wisdom? It means wisdom is visible. Many of you are marrying foolish men and you are expecting them to behave wise. Very foolish men. But you expect them that they will be wise. It's not possible. Now, look at the kind of man they chose. Um, in verse... In verse 5, it says, And the, the things pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man that is full of faith. Can you imagine? A man that is full of faith. What kind of man do you choose? You choose a man that is full of money. You choose a man that is full of emotions. The Bible says, choose a man that is full of faith. I'm not talking of church workers. I'm not talking of pastors. Because some of you don't know the difference of a man of faith and of a man of activity. You can do activities for God. That is not your life. It's not a man that prophesies. A man of faith. Full of the Holy Ghost. Can you see the consistency? Full of the Holy Ghost. Marry somebody that is full of the Holy Ghost. Those are the kind of men they raised in the early church. The kind of messages we are preaching today, we want to raise millionaires. And these hypocrite preachers, hypocrites, they now come out and be condemning wife abusers. Who did they raise in their church? Who did they raise? I saw a man, a pastor in Abuja. He carried the olive oil. Olive oil is a popular part. In, in Abuja, if, I, if, if you count one and two, is there so you know who I'm talking about? He carried Oliver. He said it will solve all of your problem. And many people were saying, Hey man, hey man. You will see people, hey, hey. you're just deceiving yourself. Only void will solve your problem. Only void will solve your problem. Now, is it that kind of a man that wants to produce righteous men? Why do you think this country is corrupt? Everywhere there is nine VG, everywhere there is gathering, there is meeting. Every December, the whole place is jumper. Nigerians in particular, you just love programs. You don't love Jesus. 
You just idolize these men. They tell you we are doing this impact, the impartation program. In, yeah, new generation impact. Reaching out with impact. Where is the impact? You can't make impact without the life of Christ. You can't make impact without righteousness. You can't make impact without holiness. What are you, why are you deceiving yourself? I grew up in this system myself. So you see, you can't. We know ourselves. I grew up in this system. Thank God for Jesus. I had to sit, sit down and say, everything I met in Christianity, I questioned it. And I went back to the Bible and read my Bible and begged God for mercy to show me the truth. So what are they raising? Every December, it is your turn to shine. From glory to glory. From this to this. Will it produce righteous men? Do you think that's the kind of teachings that will produce righteous men? They cannot rebuke you. They cannot correct you. They cannot, you know, when I was serving, I went to this winner's church in Gombe State. So people who serve those times, they know me. And I was, you know, I was tying different churches. I just want to understand what they were preaching. So when it came to winners, I, all the churches, they had their own, but I just want to mention this one. When I got there, the first week, I noticed that all that man preached was money. How will we make money? Okay. The following Sunday, it was money. The third Sunday or so, he now read the passage, but that passage has a condition. That condition rebuked sin. Do you know what this man did? He now said, well, I'm sorry for what I'm about to say. You know, the way some of you, some of you have been living, you know. Because he wants to talk about sin, he first apologized. And he said it within two minutes and left it and went back to the issue of glory, money, riches. Is it those kind of men that will produce righteous men? All this wicked husband we are talking about, some of them occasionally, the Holy Spirit brings them to church. He brings them to program. But they will never hear anything. We don't have men of God again who can see. I said, this man, you have been beating your wife. The Holy Spirit rebuke you. That man will fall down. What do you see? I see visa. I see somebody will begin to eat from now. And the miracle you don't want. Some of you, the cast that will be have you, that's what they see. They don't see men that are wicked. They don't see men that are into adultery. They don't see men that are fornicating. They don't see it. They don't see it. How can you raise righteous men? How can you? You just gather people. You do one and you have our service. How can you be doing one and you have our service? Within one and you have service, you, you preach, you do praise and worship, you take offering, which is the main thing. Is how to raise men. Brethren, when I was growing up, oh, there's a man, and I'm grateful to God, he's still alive as I'm speaking with you. Dr. Ajala. This man, he will invite us to his house. He will lock the door. We will be there. Till the following morning, he will around this something like this time we will be there. Do you know what we are doing? Only two things: praying, studying the Bible, teaching of the Word of God. Praying, teaching the Word of God. He exposed mysteries to us. I go to meetings where we will sit down hearing the Word of God, and I'm not exaggerating. From 7 a.m. in the morning till 1 p.m. 1 7 a.m. till 1 p.m. <laughs> It, the Bible says, mightily grilled the word of God in Ephesus and it prevailed. You don't have time for the word of God today. All of you, you are just doing devotion. You say you do devotion, devotion. The man just come and say, today I'm just going to give you two keys to abundance. Two keys to abundance. A wife abuser is in that meeting. An adulterer is in that meeting. But all that the man of God wants to show you is two keys. Two keys to, to divine help. To divine help. Number one, you must commit to the word of God, to the work of God. What is that work? Is church. Number two, you must continuously give sacrificially. Give. The Bible says it is more blessed to give than to receive. You must continuously give. Is that the message that's going to produce men like Paul? 
Men like Peter, like James, like John, like Andrew, like Thomas, is it that kind of message that is going to produce them? I doubt it is impossible. Why are we deceiving ourselves? Why are we deceiving ourselves? It's so sad. See, let me tell you ultimately, you are responsible for what you make of your life. In the end, nobody is going to be blamed for what happens to you. Everybody is responsible. When you stand before Jesus, or when you stand before God at the throne of judgment, books will be open, and another book will be open, which is the book of life. All that you've done, it will be shown to you. Nobody will say, well, well, it's because of this, my husband. Oh no, it's because of this, my wife. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Many of you women, what you are doing, you are attending prayer meetings. Oh, our child, they must have jobs. Our child, oh, they must marry. Oh, our son, so oh, they must not kill them. They must get promotion at work. Did you spend the years they grew up teaching them what it means to be a man in the home? Did you spend it? Did you teach them? You don't have the time. Did you invest in the word of God? Do you know the funniest thing? The women who are complaining about abuse today, the, the sons they are raising, may turn out to also be abusive tomorrow because they didn't invest the word of God in them. As a father, they, you have the responsibility to raise your children in the admonition of the Lord. If you are single and you have watched this, I plead with you that you won't make mistake. Don't make mistake. Sit down. Learn of the Lord. Many of you don't want to learn. Learn of the Lord. Learn. There are evil men out there, but you won't marry them. There are evil women. You, there's a passage in Ecclesiastes. He said, I found something more bitter than death. A woman whose heart is a trap. There are also wicked women. <laughs> he said, but they that fear the Lord shall escape her. If you fear the Lord, if you follow his way, you will escape bad marriage. If you find yourself in bad marriage and you submit to Jesus... He will see you through. It's as simple as that. So once again, divorce, God hates divorce. We believe that there's no room for divorce. We preach it without any apology. And that doesn't mean that we are mean or we don't love people. We didn't create marriage. God created it. It's our duty to preach it, to preach what exactly he asks us to preach. Jesus said in the beginning, he that made them, made them one. You can't separate one. You can only separate two. So there are no more two, but there are one. Therefore, what God has put together, let no man put asunder. Having said that, does not mean in any way. If somebody wants to kill you, don't run out of the house. Run. Running out of the house is not running out of marriage. We have said this repeatedly. Anytime you hear anybody saying that all these people that says that People should, there is no room for divorce. They want women to die there. When you hear somebody say that, I want you to know that person is from the pit of hell. That person is a messenger of Satan. Nobody has said that. They are trying to discredit the word of God. Whether you are in, you are in London and your spouse is in America, you are still married even though there is distance between you. It is not the house that makes the marriage covenant. The marriage covenant is a spiritual union. And this message is for the children of God. If you have not become born again and submit your life to Jesus, please don't argue with us with this. Go and follow your own system that you know. But this is the way of the kingdom. If you now want to practice the way of the kingdom, you, can, you have to repent of your sin and accept Jesus Christ to become your Lord and Savior. I say, Lord Jesus, save me from my sin. Give me the grace not to live in sin anymore. Come and be the Lord of my life. Wash me clean. Save me. Once you can say that genuinely and you truly repent in your heart, you will receive the Holy Spirit. And then you can then begin to understand what we are talking about. My name once again is Olusha Gumokolu. Thank you everyone who joined. And those of you that are watching later on YouTube, Thank you so much. God bless you. You can check the links below. You will find all the details there. If you want to watch some other videos, they are all the, the details are available in the link below, particularly for those of you that are watching on YouTube. God bless you.